Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In previous videos in this series, we've looked at the inverse square law for lighting. We looked at the formula that we use for that. We looked at the different components that go into it and the SI units for some of those all important lighting values in our calculations. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to look a little bit more deeply into how changing some of the values in that formula actually affect the illumination level. So on the board behind me, I've got six different examples of questions and in each one there is a change in a value. So this is a very typical exam question actually that you might get. You'll be given a point up here that is a light source and be told perhaps it's luminous intensity. So in this case, we've got a luminous intensity of a thousand candelas. And then you're given a distance that that uh, light point is mounted at above a surface and the question would typically be calculate the illumination level directly below the lamp so we're trying to figure out what is the illuminance here how brightly lit is this point here and that really is a key to understanding this that we are just literally talking about a point on this surface so we've got a light source mounted at a distance at a height above a surface and we want to know the illuminance at this level so for each question, one of those values is different and we're going to explore how changing those values affects the level of illuminance. So let's have a go at this first calculation. So we want to figure out what the illuminance is here based on the light source here at a distance of two meters. So we use our formula, the inverse square law that we learned from previous videos. And we say that E is equal to I over d squared. So here we're going to say that I, the luminous intensity, bearing in mind that this is I1, so that's luminous intensity 1. You'll notice on the others we've got luminous intensity 2, 3 and 4. And we're also dealing with distance 1 here. So that just helps us to keep track of which numbers we're referring to. So we've got a thousand candelas divided by the distance squared, the distance of 2 meters squared. So what we're actually going to do is a thousand divided by 2 squared, 2 squared is 4, so 1,000 divided by 4 is going to give us 250. And if you remember, the SI unit for illuminance is lux. So we put in the unit symbol LX. So at this point here, the luminous intensity, we're going to call that E1 because we're dealing with question 1. The luminous intensity at this position here is 250 lux. So now let's move on and have a look at our second question and see how the change in one of these variables affects the light output. So we'll do that now. Okay, so looking at this question now, you can see that we've changed one thing and kept one thing the same. So we've changed the luminous intensity. So that's gone from 1,000 to 2,000 candelas now. So we've got a light source here that has 2,000 candelas. Remember, this basically means how bright the light source is. And then here, we've got the same distance that we had before. So it's still mounted at 2 meters. So we've doubled the luminous intensity. What's going to have happened to the illuminance at this point here directly below the fitting? So we're going to find illuminance number two, and that is going to be equal to luminous intensity number two divided by the distance number two squared. So that's going to come to 2000 candelas divided by two squared. So once again, two squared is just four. So we've got 2000 divided by four and 2000 divided by four is going to give us 500 lux. So the illuminance at this point here or E2, is going to give us 500 lux. So hopefully we can see from that that if we double the luminous intensity, we went from 1,000 candelas to 2,000 candelas, we have doubled the illuminance, which makes perfect sense. Let's just do one more example where we change the luminous intensity, and then we'll have a look at changing the distance. Okay then, so now looking at this question here, we can see that once again we have increased the luminous intensity to 4,000 candelas, but we've kept the uh, height that that light fitting is mounted at the same. So again, we're going to say now that the illuminance uh, number 3 is equal to the luminous intensity number 3 divided by the distance number 3 squared. So we're going to say we've got 4,000 divided by... 2 squared, so once again 2 squared is just 4, so 4,000 divided by 4 gives us 1,000 lux. And that is a fairly insanely bright value of illuminance. Basically, standing underneath this light thing here, you'd be able to do some uh, pretty fine uh, watch repair or manufacture 
on the ground there. So that's a fairly insane amount of light. However, what it does nicely illustrate is that if we increase the luminous intensity, we increase the illuminance. And more than that, we can actually say that they are directly proportional. So we have gone, initially we had uh, 1000 candelas, which gave us 250 lux. We have quadrupled the uh, value of luminous intensity and that has quadrupled our lux. So you can see there that they are directly proportional. Uh, if we double one, we double the other. And that makes sense, doesn't it? If we make this light source brighter and brighter, then the lighting level down here gets brighter and brighter by the same proportion. Now, let's have a little go at messing around with the distance and see what difference that makes. Okay then, so hopefully we can see here that what we're doing in this case is we're changing the distance. So in these three questions along the bottom, we're going to keep the luminous intensity the same. So we've got 2000 candelas in each case. So it's effectively the same light fitting, but what we're changing is the height that that light fitting is mounted at. So in this first instance, we've got it mounted at a height of one meter, and then we've got it mounted at a height of two meters, and then four meters. So let's have a little look at how this is going to affect the light level down at this point here. Okay, so we've got a light fitting of 2000 candelas mounted at a height of one meter. So we're going to take our formula and we're gonna put in E4 is equal to I4 over D4 squared. Now you'll notice that every time I do this calculation, I'm writing the formula out again. And actually this is one of the things that my learners get really frustrated about because I always tell them to do this for every single question. You write out the formula, then the numbers, then the answer. And it's funny because those same learners often say to me, how do you remember all this stuff, Joe? How do you keep this in your head? And really, it's just because I've done it hundreds of times, either on the board or in my own notes. If I'm doing my own maths, I just, I can't help but lay it out like this. And it really does help you with your calculations and with memorizing these important formulae. So let's have a go at putting the numbers into here. So we've got uh, 2000 divided by the distance squared divided by one squared. And hopefully we can see that's fairly straightforward that one squared is just one. So 2000 divided by one, it's gonna give us a value of 2000 lux. Now, once again, that is an insanely bright level of light. If you were working down under here, that would probably actually be a fairly dangerous level of light to your eyes. That's gonna start causing you uh, some physical harm. So we can see there an insanely bright light level of 2000 lux. But let's see what happens now when we move the light fitting up a little bit. Okay then, so the next question that we've got here, you can see that we've still got the same 2000 candela uh, luminous intensity here. So this light fitting still has a luminous intensity of 2000 candelas, but now we've mounted it at a height of two meters. So we've doubled the height from the previous question. Let's see what happens to the illuminance down here now. So we're going to say, we're gonna find E number five, illuminance number five, which is equal to luminous intensity number five divided by distance number five squared. So we're gonna put our numbers in. We've got 2000 candelas divided by, in this case, we're gonna put two squared in. Okay, don't get too confused with these uh, little numbers here in the subscript. Just remember that tells you some more information about this letter. So this basically is saying, find the value of distance that has a little five in the subscript. There it is. So we just put in two squared there, and then we've got 2000 divided by two squared. And if you haven't already realized, we're actually repeating the question that we did just above this one before. So we've actually got 2000 divided by four, which is gonna give us 500 lux. So we've repeated a calculation we've already done, but it's given us some interesting results because we have gone from the previous question where we got 2000 lux, we have doubled the height that the light fitting is mounted at, but we haven't halved this value down to a thousand lux from the previous question. We've actually quartered it down to 500 lux. So that's quite an interesting little chain of events there. So you can see now that we have not just halved the illuminance down at this point, we've actually quartered it. So let's move on to our sixth and final question and see what impact that has on the illuminance below the light fitting. Okay then, so our final question, you can see here we've got now a height, we've mounted this at four meters. So we've doubled this height again. We've gone from one meter 
to two meters to four meters. So we've mounted this up really quite high now. So let's do our calculation and see what happens. So we're gonna find illuminance number six, which is the illuminance down here, which is equal to luminous intensity number six divided by distance number six squared. So we've got 2000 candelas that hasn't changed. It's the same light source, just mounted higher divided by the distance squared, which is four. So we're gonna divide that by four squared. And 2000 divided by four squared is going to give us a value of, effectively that becomes 2000 divided by 16. So we've got 2000 divided by 16, which is going to give us a value of 125 lux. So that's interesting. You can see once again, we've now gone from 500 lux, but again, we've doubled the height that the light fitting is mounted at. And now we've gone down to, again, a quarter of the illuminance that we had here. So here we had 500 lux, here we've only got 125 lux. So you can see there that by doubling the height that our light fitting is mounted at, we actually end up quartering the amount of illuminance down at that level there. So that's quite an interesting little thing and a good insight into the way that the inverse square law affects our lighting calculations. So there we go, we've done a few examples to see how changing the variables in this calculation will affect the illuminance. But again, let's think real world. If we put in a brighter and brighter light fitting, it makes sense that the light level here gets higher and higher and higher. And in fact, if we double the light output from our light fitting, then of course we're going to double the illuminance that we get below it. However, when we start looking at doubling the height. So here we go from one meter to two meters. We don't just halve the light output, we actually quarter it. And the reason that that happens is we've got this squared over the distance. So effectively that squaring there squares the impact of the change that you make. So by timesing the distance by two, we actually decrease the light output to a fourth of what it was. And we can see that effect here. Here we've gone from one meter mounted light fitting all the way over on this side to four meters. And we've gone from 2000 lux all the way down to 125 lux. So again, that change in height has a major impact on the light level down at ground level in this case. So again, this is a fairly extreme example. It's pretty unusual that you'll do a lighting design or a calculation where you've got a powerful light fitting mounted at one meter above the floor and then be asked to change your design so it's mounted at four meters above the floor. Something's gone seriously wrong in the initial planning stages of that calculation. However, it nicely illustrates the point of what happens as we change the distance, what happens to the illuminance level down at the height that we're measuring at. So I hope this video has been helpful. Hopefully we've gained a slightly deeper insight into the inverse square law and its impact on numbers. Hopefully, if we've managed to do these calculations ourselves, if we've written this out a few times now, then this formula is getting stuck in your mind, which is really important for your exams because it's almost guaranteed to come up depending which subject that you're studying and at what level. So all that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.